Good morning everyone, hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Primary Arms GLX RS-15. Now before we get into the video, full disclosure on the Primary Arms GLX RS-15 is that I am a dealer for Primary Arms Optics, so I did get this at a discounted price. They didn't send it out to me. They actually haven't sent anything out to me since I broke their last optic, which is perfectly fine, not a problem. They are also one of my biggest affiliates. I believe they came in at number three last year at about $1,300 or so that I made off of affiliates last year. So keep in mind that there has been a long relationship there. A lot of the ammo you're gonna see in this video is supplied by Calloway Ballistics. So go ahead and check them out if you're interested in cheap training ammo and use code FOCUS to save yourself a little bit of money. Now getting into basics of the GLX, RS-15, this is a 7075 body, which is good. You're starting off with a good material there. It is a Seymour footprint with, I believe, a 20 by 26 millimeter window with, of course, a few curbs in there, so it is a little bit bigger than that. We also have a top-loading 2032 battery, which is very important because you are going to be swapping your batteries quite a bit. I'm on battery two in week number three. Uh-oh, that died, it's gone. Now on top of that we have windage and elevation that have very nice clicks in half MOA increments. Now on their website they mentioned something about like competition precision use and I don't think most handguns are really accurate enough to take advantage of half MOA clicks but maybe if you're some competition shooter that is a feature that you're actually looking for. On the left hand side of the body we have the worst buttons I have ever seen on a pistol sight. They are small, they're recessed, they're rubberized, they're mushy and they are the worst adjustments. I haven't tried that many red dots, probably only about 10 pistol red dots, but so far this GLX RS-15 does have the worst buttons I've used so far. Now, the one good thing about the RS-15 and really the only thing that's, you know, GLX about it, because of course, silver line, gold line, platinum line, the only thing that elevates this above their other pistol offerings is the fact that this does have the ACSS Vulcan reticle. This option specifically, I believe, has a two or three MOA center dot, and then around that you have a huge circle that at full extension should be barely visible or not visible at all. And what that does is if you pull up and you're not quite aligned, you can see the outer circle, which then gives you a reference point of where you need to point the gun to actually get a good sight picture and see your dot. That is useful for a lot of people if you don't spend that much time on your gun. And even if you do spend a lot of time on your gun, there are times where you will just get a bad draw, a bad presentation or something. And now you have a very fast reference point of where that center dot is. It's very easy to pick up. It's very useful. It also drains the battery incredibly fast. Now, this does come with a very interesting auto live system. I believe with the full dot and outer full Vulcan reticle, it's only rated for 5,000 hours at a medium setting. And you're probably gonna be on a much higher setting because of course, if you're outside, you know, a medium setting is not bright enough. You're gonna be much closer to the top end. And where I was at full daylight, I believe I was either one or two settings below the maximum. So realistically, you're probably only looking at something like a thousand hours of battery life. Now, the battery that they sent with me, as I mentioned this earlier, died on the first magazine of the second range trip. So not sure if that battery was just dead or a bad battery. However, the battery that I currently have in here, which is a energizer or something or other, and it's been working perfectly fine. Now, the reticle does have a auto live system that is very interesting. So you have your center dot, and then of course the big outer horseshoe or the big outer circle for your Vulcan reticle. And the Vulcan part of the reticle will turn off in about 15 seconds if it does not detect motion and while the dot itself stays on. So if you leave the handgun stationary for almost any amount of time, it's automatically gonna turn off that big circle, which is gonna drain your battery very quickly. And a feature like that is very well thought out and basically necessary because again, to power that full reticle, drains the battery very, very quickly. So kudos to them for designing a system that will at least extend that as long as possible. Now, if I haven't mentioned it already, this is the Seymour mounting footprint, which is not something that I have a slide or a gun cut for. So what I'm doing here, this is a RMR cut slide. I have a universal adapter plate that is very thick, so it can basically accommodate any red dot on the market. 
and then the GLX RS-15 is mounted to that. I did do some drop testing, but not point of impact shift testing, because of course it's not the optics fault that I don't have a gun cut for Seymour. Seymour is more of a competition style cut, if you will. There are a lot of guns, a lot of comp guns cut for a Seymour. It does, the screw pattern is just a little bit different and it does allow them to get that top mounted battery in the front and to have that nice big window and, you know, kind of fit in this footprint. So again, I did drop test the optic, but I didn't really test it for zero retention, if that makes sense. Now, one of my biggest complaints with the optic is that looking through it is not particularly pleasant. And because of the emitter system that they have in here, there are some issues depending on your light source or where you're pointing it. And what I mean by that is if you're holding it out at arms like as you should, and you have any sort of oppositional light, like in this room, I have two box lights right there. And if they're pointed even close to them, you start to get this really ugly straight line up and down in between the dot and the bottom of the circle on the Vulcan reticle. On top of that, if the Vulcan reticle shuts off, you can still see the outline of it in the reflected into the actual window itself. Now the glass also does have a very noticeable blue notch filter. That's really not the problem. That really doesn't bug me. That's pretty standard on a lot of optics and it will help to conserve that battery life, give contrast on the dot, maybe a little bit of low light transmission. I haven't tested this under night vision or anything else like that, of course. But again, the main problem is that depending on where you're looking, where the light source is at, you're gonna see some of that emitter housing reflected in the window itself which is very unpleasant. It's still usable and you still get a usable image and you can figure out where your dot is, of course, but then you have all these weird artifacts in the glass depending on where you're looking and it's just not particularly pleasant. Now, probably my main complaint with this optic is that this retails for $360 and the only thing that I actually like about it is the Vulcan reticle. And again, it, depending on where you're looking, it doesn't look all that good because of the reflections in the glass. Now, why $360 is a bit of a problem is the fact that there are other optics that are not made by primary arms, made by Hollis, and if they're still making those with the ACSS Vulcan reticles, that are just better optics, and you should probably just buy those instead, especially for around that $360, $300 to $400 price range. I think this is the worst option with the ACSS Vulcan reticle, and of course, this is the one actually made by primary arms. I've reviewed all of Primary Arms Thoughts, the Classic Mini, the Classic Micro, the RS-10. Well, that one there's a little bit better, but still not great, and now the RS-15. This optic, I think, has a very small niche, and that is going to be for competition shooters and competition shooters only. The battery life is a drawback for concealed carry or anything else like that. If you wanted to, a duty-style optic, this is not a duty-style optic. If I had to guess, most people are looking for primary arms to bring out, bring out exceptional value, uh, duty grade features at a lower price, basically maybe even an enclosed optic version, something like that, with all of the primary arms feature, ACSS reticle, so on and so forth. But as it stands, this is basically a competition style dot with really terrible illumination controls, mediocre battery life at best, and glass that's just not all that pretty. And again, this isn't an inexpensive dot where you can kind of wash away some of those problems because it's under $200, it's $150 dot, something like that. No, this is a full price $360 dot, which competes with a wide variety of offerings on the market. It's not that most expensive on the market for sure, but there are just better dots at almost every category that this would fit in. As far as being the GLX RS-15, again, the only thing GLX about it is the reticle. So for me, and I'm imagining most of my audience that's looking for the highest value option possible, I really don't think this fits the bill, especially when if you're looking for that ACSS Vulcan reticle and you need it, there are just better offerings on the market in the same price category, just not made by primary arms. And you think that that would be their bread and butter and they would be able to execute it and put that in a body that everyone wants. That's my main gripe is that the RS-15, maybe it's fine for a certain group of competition shooters, but for everybody else that wants a general purpose dot, this just isn't that. So I'm sure that Primary Arms will come out with a good duty style, EDC style dot in the future. This one just isn't it. So with all that out of the way, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of the GLX RS-15 in the comments down below. And with all that out of the way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. God bless.